I'm not one to make weight, Doctor. I've patients to attend. Yes, Nurse Crane? How can I help you? I'm so sorry. I know Dr. Swansea wanted you to rest, but we have somewhat of a crisis. A crisis, you say? Our supply of antiseptics is nearly depleted. I was hoping there was another box up here, but... Sorry. There's nothing here. Some of the patients won't last the night without them. Honestly, sir, I'm beside myself. I may have a solution. In France, during the war, drugs shortage was a daily problem. and We had to use our wits to overcome the shortages. However do you mean? If combined correctly, certain household chemical products can be used in a pinch instead. Now, where's the hospital storeroom? The storeroom? Fat chance. This is the Pembroke, and space is luxury we don't have. Everything used to be stored in the old morgue. Perhaps I should look there first. Where is this morgue? It's the large building behind the hospital. You'll need to go in the back door because it's been sealed off for sanitary reasons. Take this key. It opens a small back entrance at the end of a narrow street. The abandoned morgue behind the hospital. A small door at the end of a narrow street. On my way, then. Thank you, nurse. Yes, doctor? Why then do you always work the nights? Don't you ever sleep? At the Pembroke, we're always hands on deck. Your dedication to the Pembroke does you credit, Nurse Crane, but when do you sleep? We staff get our sleep when we can, Doctor. Nursing is a vocation, not the labor of a journeyman. Lack of sleep and the medical profession always ends in disaster. I've witnessed many a colleague succumb to stimulants to fight exhaustion. Drugs were as deadly as bullets in the trenches. London's trenches start here at Pembroke Hospital. We are on the front line, make no mistake. Exactly how bad is the supply situation here at Pembroke? It really depends. Dr. Swansea deftly works his society contacts for monies, but with the quarantine, well, we're in God's hands. Please, could you point me in the direction of the morgue again? It's the large, boarded-up building behind the hospital. You can't miss it. The key I gave you will open the small back door to it. That's all for now, Nurse Crane. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Cox. Dr. Reed. Still working at night, I see. I like that. And why is that? People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. You're lucky to be alive, Mr. Cox. I hope you're starting to take better care of yourself. This place is full of sickness and decay. How could I get better in such a dump? Consider yourself lucky. I'm treating all of my patients equally. But don't push your luck. Don't play the innocent with me. I'm sure you have good reasons to act this way. And also weaknesses that can be exploited. Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. Still fucking hurts. Boss, it cut me good. That man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Oh, I guess revenge gives you balls. What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor asshole thought it would be easy to return the favor. Only the strongest survive, then. Survival at all costs. Is that all you think about? 
I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. Fortifiers. <laughs> as popular as they are ineffective. But they do contain iron tartrate, and that might prove itself useful. These scowls feed from corpses and the husks of animals.
Mr. Connor's injuries don't match the report. I'd better look into this. Multiple abrasions and scarring on the arms and legs. Old and distinctive injuries of a sailor or a fisherman. Traces of a pinkish foam at the corner of the lips. Some sort of drug overdose, perhaps? The chest was originally opened to perform the operation. The sutures are clean, but the chest has been reopened. A puncture over the left lung, possibly a chest tube insertion. Not the cleanest work, but I think it was successful. Signs of internal bleeding. So, Dr. Tippett's anesthetics were incorrectly dosed, causing the patient's death. And then, he tried to operate on him again. Tippett has made an egregious error. It's time we talked. I'm not sure I can defeat them without becoming stronger. Oh, to drink blood is so tempting. Sodium hypochlorite. Dangerous to administer, but efficient in the proper dosage.
evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Tell me what Dr. Tippett's did. I know his mistake caused a patient's death. If I had not covered up his error, Dr. Tippett's would have been fired from this hospital. I could not let that happen. You can't allow your emotions to dictate your conduct concerning patients, Nurse Brannigan. Look around you, Dr. Reed. Do you really think we can afford to lose a brilliant practitioner like Dr. Tippett's in our situation? Perhaps you did it with the best intentions, Nurse Brannigan, but you took a great risk. Must I remind you that a man died? You mean you've never made a mistake? Never covered your tracks? Come on, Doctor. I wasn't born yesterday. Goodbye, nurse. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? Kokoran, I want you to tell me about Mr. Connor. How did he die? What happened? He was my patient. He died because of my mistake. That's the blunt truth. What was the nature of the mistake? It was a twofold error. My diagnosis was wrong, and the administered dosage was too strong. Why not stop practicing? Are you mad? I killed that man, I admit it, and it won't happen again. I have saved so many lives since then. Who was this patient? I don't know. Some sick man from the docks. Maybe a fisherman. I had no time to talk with him. No one claimed the body. I will cover for you, Dr. Tippett, by keeping what happened to Mr. Connor to myself. I... I don't know what to say, actually. I can't exactly force you to become my accomplice. You didn't force me. This is my decision to make. I believe you're still of use to the hospital, considering the situation. Then I can make you this promise. As soon as the epidemic is eradicated, I will resign. What will you do after your resignation? Do you have a plan? I always fancied visiting Cyprus. Such a beautiful island. I could buy a house there, by the sea. Read poetry and wait for death. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. I cannot enter.
damn it. Why is this so difficult every time? That is better. That is better. I will make it through one more night. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives? I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Doctor Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Finally, you've returned, Doctor. Did you find anything of value? Yes, Nurse. You've worked your first miracle, Doctor. Now, this patient here needs immediate treatment. Duty calls? When the storm has passed, I'll show you how to mix the remedy yourself with the same basic ingredients. Many thanks, Doctor. When you've finished, you ought to report to Dr. Swansea in his office. He's been looking for you. Seemed pressing. Jonathan, come in. Fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead, unalive, Immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. It may seem strange, but your words have brought me some comfort here. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. 
Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. took my dear wife, Emily. I take comfort knowing we'll soon be together again. Mr. Rainfield, that's no way to talk. You're in good hands here, and we'll be up again soon enough. <laughs> Now do me a kindness and get some sleep. I'll be back round later. Your words are kind. The blessings of an angel. You're the sweet, sweet lady of mercy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. It's a pleasure to see you again. You seem surprised. Dr. Swansea has brought me up to speed concerning your recent appointment to Pembroke Hospital. You're a vampire. The lady who saved me that night, before vanishing into thin air. I remember you from the pub with Dr. Swansea. Indeed. Allow me to introduce myself formally this time. My name is Lady Ashbury. I remember you well, in spite of the brevity of our encounter. My mic has been off this entire time. I did not know that. <laughs> So it seems our Dr. Swansea does indeed have a fascination for creatures of our constitution. Dr. Swansea is a remarkable man. Dedicated, one might say, obstinate? He spent years compiling our bestiary. I hope you're more disposed to answer my questions now. You must have countless questions, but our rather urgent matter first. Swansea has explained. My cover, if you prefer, has been compromised. Pardon my boldness, your ladyship, but I have questions concerning this condition we share. As a newborn, your hunger for answers is rivaled only by your thirst for blood. But the questions need weight. I'm a scientist. My trade is in the deciphering of mysteries, and I need information to feed my mind. I will gladly answer every question you have, but first, prove yourself capable of resolving my predicament without eating the culprit. Have any of the patients given you trouble? These poor souls have so little left to live for. I do my best to ease their pain. The world would be a better place if it were cared for by women like you. You make me blush. I am simply a necessary evil. Dr. Swansea has commissioned me to be your agent in this matter. You could start by explaining what's amiss. These past insufferable weeks, I've been the victim of extortion. I've made a first payment, but the blackmailer grows greedy. I must refuse his most recent demands. Who would be 
so foolish as to threaten you, a kindred spirit? Even if it were the case, and I highly doubt it, a vampire would have asked for something more valuable than money. My suspicions lean toward a patient or their family. If we're dealing with an ordinary criminal, surely you've the means to deal with it yourself, if I may. As immortal tradition doth dictate, all fangs and hypnotic eyes ablaze, the blood would run like a river. That's what I hope to avoid. Violence has a tendency to spiral out of control. Hmm. What are your expectations? Please be precise. As the newly appointed surgeon of this hospital, you are in an excellent position to ask innocent questions and deftly learn the identity of my blackmailer. Please continue. Every detail is essential. I'm your man. My embarrassment in this matter is eclipsed only by my shame at having put the hospital at risk. The threat from our anonymous scoundrel is clear. A list of dates. My visits coinciding with the dates of suspicious patient deaths due to massive blood loss. Is it true? Now aren't you the blunt one? Excuse my impertinence, your ladyship. This is not an interrogation. I assure you that this line of questioning is in your best interest. In all honesty, I'm not simply a patron to the hospital. My visits serve a dual purpose. Dr. Swansea has been treating my condition with a revolutionary technique of blood transfusion. It seems you are a specialist in the domain. I'll take care of it. Do you know where I should start? If that was the case, I'd settle the matter myself. You could talk to our local gossip, Harriet Jones. Not a pin drops here without her hearing about it. I'll meet that woman now. My life, as others know, is in your hands, Dr. Reed. I'm sure of your discretion, but I do fear your powers of persuasion will be put to the test. When this is resolved, I'll be your obligé. I'll answer all questions in regards of your condition. Okie dokie. So that's the lady we couldn't talk to. That's the girl that's in that locked room that Sean is facing. Red with no respect. What? What? What is this? Who are you? Get out of my room. There's no need for alarm, madam. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon. Preposterous. Dr. Reed, you say? I don't want some bumbling intern. Where's Dr. Swansea? Please, calm down, madam. I assure you that I am highly qualified. I'm just back from war duty. <laughs> how brave. Threatening an old defenseless woman. You know how long I've been a patient here. You've picked the wrong fight. I'm Harriet Jones. Harriet Jones? Indeed. I've been meaning to have a chat with you. You know what goes on here better than any other patient, I gather. Better than any patient, nurse or doctor. I've seen so many vile undertakings. I heard there have been some despicable goings on. Was there a case of blackmail? Blackmail? I... Wait. You're investigating something. This isn't a social call. I assure you, madam, this is not an investigation into a possible medical error. Debauchery, then? Nurses Crane, Hawkins, Brannigan's, whores, all of them. They can't keep their legs shut. I've seen them scratching slutty sores. Really? Well, if you have irrefutable proof, I'll not have the staff behaving in such a manner here. This is your business, Doctor, not mine. But I swear one of the nurses is cavorting with some man on hospital hours. Thank you for your time, Miss Jones. You've given me something to go on. See you on the next round. 
All right. The patient oh, I... and staff might know something. I'll start my investigation with them. Luckily, I already know who it is. I'm just looting the hospital real quick. going on I'm blight sir Newton blight I've lost my mate can't find him anywhere I'm dr. Jonathan Reed from the Pembroke Hospital please calm down and give me more details Oswald and myself were both infantry sir we were en route for the hospital but well we had a disagreement and Oswald ran off towards the canal how long have you been searching for him I, I can't go there too many rats by the water Fucking rats. Can't stand them since the war, sir. Can't stand them at all. Don't be ashamed, Mr. Blight. Many soldiers who survive the trenches suffer from musophobia. I'll see what I can do for your friend. What can you tell me about yourself? I'm Oswald's best friend. We served in the same regiment, sir. Taken care of each other since we came back from the front. This is a dangerous part of town. What are you doing here? We were looking for the Pembroke Hospital. He... We both need help. T treatment, I mean. To get some sleep. Just need to feel better, sir. What can you tell me about your friend? His name is Oswald Thatcher. We survived the war together. Oswald is... nervous and quite fragile since we came back from the war. Where was your friend the last time you saw him? He went down by the canal. He didn't want to go to the hospital. I think he went to the sewers on purpose. So I couldn't go after him. I have all the information I need for now. If I find anything out about your friend, I'll let you know as soon as I can. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thanks. Ooh. You're sure you don't come back with me? Nah, I have to see someone at the hospital. Be careful. You look so bad they may keep you as a patient. Fuck them. I don't like hospitals. Or doctors. Well then, when you go back to Whitechapel, you may find this useful. What is it? A pass for a free medical exam by the best nurse available. Just read it. I don't read well, but thank you, I guess. <laughs> and she didn't see me how? Going into the sewers. The sewers are healthy. Nice. Somebody's getting fucking eaten. This man has been savagely attacked and dragged to the floor. Hope that's not Oswald. No, it's not. I can still hear him. Looks like a boss arena.
Hey, new weapon. Does this thing absorb blood? Yes, it does. Okay. That's why it does so much damage, because it shoots both shots at once. Are you injured, sir? Help me get out of here. I need to get out. I'm Dr. Reed, and I'd be glad to help you, but you must calm down first. Please, take a deep breath and tell me your name. Okay. Okay, I I'm Oswald Thatcher. Please, I need to get out. Mr. Thatcher, your friend Newton sent me to help you. Do you remember him? Yes. Yes, I do. Good. Now leave this place and enjoy the cool night air. It's quite invigorating. I'm sure you'll feel better if you do. He's got claustrophobia. Oh, he's got a headache, too. Do I have anything for that? I don't think I have the headache medicine. Fatigue, cold, bronchitis. Nope. I don't have the recipe for headaches. Shit. <laughs> That dude's only level four. <laughs> this is despicable. The ban of the dragon. Yeah, once I get further through the game, I'm going to look up a collectibles guide because I want to get the true Dragon's Bane. It's a... I, believe I'm doing this. I think I already said it was a 400 damage sword. I have this thirst for blood. There he is. That is a werewolf. What sort of creature is this?
a lot to check, but I should anyway. Some voucher for a free check up in Whitechapel. What is Nurse Crane up to? I really must find her. Seems to me she's just giving out free meds. Okie dokie, I'm not gonna go to Whitechapel just yet. I gotta get some sleep from my character. Or, you know what, maybe I will, I'll try to get there, and then what I can do is I can just sleep at the, yeah, I'll just sleep at the hideout. Get some extra XP on the way there. Yeah, to go to Whitechapel, you gotta go this way. Yeah, I can go further. And you're next. Clean in the street. That's a wolf. Here, I have an idea. Come with me, fellow. Come with me. Hey, no, don't. Don't shoot me. Shoot the wolf. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, 
Yeah, that poor fella just got eaten. It's locked. That's a boss fight. I win. Here we are. This is White Chapel. White Chapel. This neighborhood is linked somehow to the kind Lady Ashbury's blackmail. First, let's find this Petrescu fellow. Oh shit! <laughs> Are you all right? The bastard hit the wall next to me. I don't even know if he meant to miss. If you've been hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. Name's Albert. Remember it. Now bugger off. I found the recruiter you were expecting. He's dead, but he carried a note. The wet boot boys have accepted your application. I knew it! I told you I was tough enough. I'll be free soon. This note was found on a dead man, Albert. If that doesn't change your mind, then you must be ready to face the risks. You're all fancy words, none of which concern me. Go worry about someone else. I'm fine and I have a future here. Do you need assistance? Please. Feeling tired these days. There you go. Let's hope nobody steals it from you. Very funny. Goodbye, young man. Me, I'll not die in some piss stinking alley drinking worse than a week of lappy. What? Shooting a boy in the middle of the street. Not the best thing to do, wouldn't you say? What? You saw what happened. H who are you? I'm Dr. Reed. 
And I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you promise me to set your gun aside. No. Look, I I'm not a violent man. I'm Benjamin Palmer, doctor. And no one can help me. Not even you. You don't seem well, Benjamin. Do you need any help? I always feel ill, sir. It's like I'm never right. I don't have my green. I will see you later. A gun, alcohol, and a bad temper make a terrible cocktail, sir. Goodbye for now. I'll find that safe house and I'll go there. Everybody else, I can't talk to right now. I gotta end the episode. It's been going on too long. Here we go. Oh, we got ourselves a, a quick, quick thing. Yeah, this place has seen better days. I just need one more common trigger part and I can get an upgrade for that shotgun. Hmm. We'll find that in the morning though. I want to upgrade... I want to upgrade my claws. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the episode. Honestly, because I don't think I can make another one at the moment. But I can once I get back from work. 
Okay, he needs cold meds. He's got a migraine. Everybody I know is healthy so far here. And I don't know anybody here. Okie dokie. Well, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, kiddos.